I, I'm shooting this video in the middle of April of 2022. And the point of me telling you that is because that means that we have already concluded with the first quarter of the year. So anyone who is in the corporate world, an entrepreneur, or anyone who is goal-oriented, you know how important quarters are. Um, you know that that is such a great and a natural milestone to stop and measure where are you at with reaching your year-end goals. And I want to talk about that today. And so first of all, if you are well on your way for tracking to reach your year-end goal, round of applause because kudos to you. Keep up the good work. Um, however, if you are finding that you're a little bit stuck, you're a little bit delayed, something like that, I want to ask you, what is holding you back? And so we're going to talk about that today, but let me start with a proper introduction. I'm Connie Jo Holmes. I'm the founder of BU to be full hypnosis and coaching. And my mission within my company is to teach individuals how to confidently and courageously move from reacting to life to owning your life. And one fabulous way of owning your life is... Um, living by intentions that you set for yourself um, and setting goals for your life um, for different things that you aspire to be, do, have, and give in this world. So let's get to the content of this video. So, um, all right, so if you are, um, if you're finding that something is holding you back from reaching your goals, I am going to almost guarantee you that the reason is, is it's something rooted in fear. There really are two drivers in this world, and one is love and one is fear. And fear can be named all sorts of other things, but if you really drill down, it is fear-based. And so I want to talk about that and ask you what fear-based thing, component, um, you know, whatever, is holding you back. And I really, when I think about it, it's a few things. And so one of them can be that you are holding out on perfection. You're waiting for per perfection. So I'm gonna tell you, there is nothing, 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 nothing um, true about perfection. Um, it's, it's just, it's not a real thing. It can't be. Um, and then also, if anyone thinks that it can be, perfect in whose eyes? You know, I guarantee you, if you finally think it's perfect and then you release it or something, well, Susie Q over there is not going to think it's perfect. So is it perfect? <laughs> so you do hear a lot of people say uh, perfect is done. And I have to tend to agree with that. Now, it does not mean go out and do something half-assed and do it sloppy. That's not it at all. Do your absolute best, um, but also know that done is perfect. So an example of that is you are somebody who you have a lifelong dream to publish a book. Would you, and so literally hold out your hands here. Would you rather have your book published and in people's hands and they're reading it and it's changing their lives and, oh damn, I've got two typos in there and I've got a couple of sentences I probably could have worded a little bit better. You know, would I rather have that or would I rather have a perfect manuscript, but it's sitting all alone and by itself <laughs> on my computer hard drive. What would I rather have, you know? And so when you look at it that way, I hope that you really realize that perfect is done, period. I could go on and on with that, but I'm going to end with that. Um, the second thing, uh, fear-based, that can hold people back is that um, we compare ourselves to other people. <sighs> I wish I had a magic wand to just wave and just get that crap out of here. Um, but all I can really say with that is comparison is a killer. Um, I think I actually, because I did write a book that probably has some typos and probably has a few sentences that could have been worded a little bit better. Um, but I believe I have, I say something in there about, to me, comparison is the gateway to depression. Um, because, you know, when we constantly compare ourselves to somebody, we always view ourselves as being in lack. And that is never a good place to be in. I know I did a video not too long ago about um, comparison. And it was talking about, well, you know, that's why there's Coke and there's Pepsi. That's why there's coffee and there's tea. Just because you might be a tea drinker doesn't mean that coffee is crap. And just because you might 
be a Pepsi drinker does not mean Coke is off in the corner crying his eyes out. Not at all. Um, there's a flavor for everybody. And, you know, just like perfection, you know, there's no right or wrong because whose eyes are we, you know, viewing that through? So comparison, cut that crap out. Um, the other thing is not being consistent. Um, whenever we strive to do something new and reaching a goal, there's probably new tactics or routines or something that you need to do that might be a little bit new. Um, you need to be consistent. It is like building that muscle. And so I do find that, you know, you know, January 1 through maybe January 4th, <laughs> maybe the 15th, um, people are really good. You're going to the gym every single day, right? But then eventually you kind of peter out and you peter out. So that's an example of not being consistent. You have to be consistent until you create that habit um, or whatever. Well, it is a habit um, so that you can reach your goal. So um, always remember to be consistent and to not let some little voice in your head talk you out of doing something. Um, another reason why people um, sometimes operate out of fear is that they feel that they don't have enough experience or the right experience. And so what I always suggest for people with that, I have a vision of baby feet in my mind right now um, because it's taking those small steps. You know, if you think about a goal, you should chunk it down anyway. And even if you've got that goal chunked down as small as what you think it can be, I'm sure there's still a component in there that you can just start with, you know? And you need to get your feet wet, your baby feet wet. <laughs> and, you know, you need to, you know, um, reach that successfully so that you can have that under your belt. It gives you confidence that you're able to do it. And then with that confidence, it allows you to keep diving in and drilling deeper and, you know, reaching your goal ultimately, which is wonderful. Um, the other area oh, is worrying about what people think. So I wish I could just give a double middle finger to that whole concept. <laughs> so, um, you know what, and I know it's easy for me to say because I'm 51 years old and I do have to tell you, this is something that you age into and it's glorious. Um, not worrying about what other people think. Um, and I hear it gets even better the older you get. Um, but, I, so I'm not going to sit here and say, get over it, suck it up, don't worry about it. I'm not going to do any of those things because I did care at one time. Um, I was 20 at one time. I was in my 30s. I was in my 40s, you know, so I used to care too. And if I'm honest, there's still a little part of me that still cares a little bit. Um, but I have to tell you, one, there's such freedom in not caring. Um, so that's number one. But number two, the other thing that I really like about it is, and I'm going to sound, I'm just going to risk sounding like a snob here, but I'm okay with that. So I always want to challenge people that if you are, um, you know, if, if you're worrying about what somebody is thinking, it better be somebody who is your role model, somebody who's your mentor, somebody who has already led the path down a similar road that you're looking to do. And it better not be somebody who like it lives in a box this big. Okay. <laughs> um, it just, you know, because when you do that, one, you are allowing that person and what they care to set the foundation for you. Nobody should set a foundation for you but you. Um, but also, it better not be somebody who has a pretty small and cracked foundation. If you care about what anyone thinks, it better be somebody that, again, is your role model, is your mentor, is has already taken a path that you desire to take yourself. Um, but even with that, you're still two totally different people. And there are many, many roads that can take you to the same place. So, um, so I'm hoping that if you kind of look at it that way, that that might help you a little bit as well. So, um, and I guess, you know, that's, that's really it. That's what I wanted to say with all of this is, you know, if you haven't reached your goals, do not beat yourself up. Do not, you, there's still plenty of time for the year, but just kind of regroup a little bit though and figure out, okay, why am I not on track? Question it, strip it down a little bit, and I guarantee you, more than likely, one of the things or some germ of one of the things that I said today is probably at the root of it. And figure out which one it is 
and then hopefully some of my little commentary around it will help you know give you some strength and some insight and some empowerment for you to say yeah you know what why am I caring about that? I am back on target with my goal. And come December 31st, I am going to be a whole different person because I've conquered this huge goal that I set out for myself. And when that happens, send me a message and um, I'll be your first uh, and your biggest cheerleader for you. So, all right. I hope that was helpful. If it was, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. I appreciate that.